Guys, it is that time of the month. Oh, wait, no. Well, you know what I mean. It's time for Android Apps. Number one is Doodle Jump DC Superheroes. And yeah, this is basically Doodle Jump, the same game that was released about five years ago. The very same game that propelled smartphones to a whole new level, it really gave them some momentum, it was kind of like a reason to own one in itself. And as well as being a reskinned version, it does have a couple of new features. The ability to rescue yourself with a sort of rope at the cost of gems. The ability to actually collect gems, which you can use to upgrade your various different specials, your jetpack, your shield, your trampoline, as well as your backcopter, which is, you know, these are all essentially reskinned version of the original vehicles, but it adds a nice twist and gives you just one more reason to go back to this glorious game. I spent way too much time on the first game, and I can start to feel that urge coming again. It's not really a good thing. Next up is Beam, and this is actually on the list for its innovation. In terms of actually using it, I'm not really sure I would, but it's a really, really cool idea, and I can see where the possible opportunity is. Essentially, it basically tracks you and one other person. So for example, if you're trying to meet up with a group of friends and you're just terrible with directions, it can ensure you both get to the same place. So basically, for one hour and one hour only, your location becomes visible to that person. And obviously this is very secure, they have to be friends with you and be given permission. I can actually think of quite a few different uses of this. For example, you could be in a totally new city and not really know your way around, so instead you could let your friends find you. Or if you're in like a whole set of cars all going to the same place, you could make sure you don't get lost. Now the next game is a little bit strange. First of all, I've no idea why it's called Paco, and it claims to be a car simulator and it's pretty far from that. Having said that, it's a hell of a lot of fun. Essentially, you're set in loads of different arenas and you've got to survive as long as possible against basically an infinite wave of cops. And yeah, it requires a lot of skill, it's very slick, it's very polished. You can choose your songs, it's a very, very enjoyable experience. There are in-app purchases, as you would expect with a free game, but nonetheless, you can unlock just about anything you want to, if you persist. Safe to say, that's exactly what I've been doing, having already sunk about 7 hours into this. Uh, let's just call it an investment. So, another rather unusually named app is Dripler. Now this one is basically trying to be the hub for all Android users, the kind of place you want to go to find out all the latest news, all the cool tips and tricks you can be doing, as well as just answer community questions and just find out more general answers. So basically, there are two main sections. The first one is a community where Android users around the world post their most pressing questions, like which Android game has the best graphics? And then, I mean, providing it's a fairly interesting question, you tend to get quite a few comments and responses. But the main section of this app is called Drips, and this is essentially a summarized news feed of all the most important Android news. It tends to be more to do with stuff that's related to speeding up and optimizing your Android device, and kind of squeezing more functionality out of it, rather than sort of new phone releases and that kind of thing but I can't help but feel that every now and again there's a sponsored post. The app could also do with a tad of optimization. it feels a little bit sluggish. Now the last game is Castle Tower Defense 2. Now this one is actually very, very similar to games like Kingdom Rush. It's got a very similar art style, a similar upgrade path, a similar sort of design aesthetic as well as gameplay mechanics, but it works much better. There's less force of sort of in-app purchases and almost everything can be done within the game. On top of that, I found the towers and upgrades more interesting and impactful, and the storyline actually makes a bit more sense. It's an incredibly deep game, I don't know if you noticed, but on the skill tree, you could upgrade some of the skills up to 60 times each, that's huge. And very much like Kingdom Rush and the newer games, it's very pretty to look at, it's got nice vibrant colours, crisp clean lines, and on a larger display or a 2K panel, it really really shines. On top of that, everything runs at a smooth frame rate, with the actual action coming along at a nice pace. You can speed things up, and you can also summon new rounds quicker if you're feeling confident, and there's a bonus for that. You can use spells to actually destroy enemies if you're in a bit of a pickle, but this uses mana which only recharges slowly. To begin with, there's only one hero you can possibly use, but you unlock more as you go on, and these heroes actually level up and become stronger and develop new skills, which is a nice bit of bonus. Okay, so that's it from me for now. Those are my top 5 Android apps and games from September to October. I'll stick links in the description. Mr. Who's the Boss, out.